Hi, uh, my name is Ankit. Uh, I work in the mobile team here. Uh, and I am going to talk about uh, uh, a lot more than just uh, building mobile friendly websites. Uh, I am going to talk about uh, uh, why, uh, first of all, why they are why they are important, why we need to build them. Then, of course, I am going to tell them how to build them. And then uh, I will move on to uh, what, what the relationship is uh, with, uh, with Google search. So, Yeah. Why should we have mobile friendly websites? Uh, you might say that yeah, I have a perfectly good website that works on, uh, on my desktop. Uh, I get a million users to care about people who are on mobile phones. Well, the answer is very simple, and uh, you might, uh, many of you might know about it already. Uh, perfectly visible or not, but uh, we have uh, we have close to 50 million internet users today. Uh, but as compared to that, we have 330 uh, million mobile phone subscribers, out of which 80 million uh, mobile phones are GPRS. Uh, you might get a million million page views every day, but if you want to go to 10 million, uh, then tomorrow, then maybe mobile phones are way to go. Uh, then you might say, okay, uh, so I have a good website. Why don't I just show that to all my uh, all the people who are using mobile phones? Uh, well, the answer to that is uh, uh, is not only is not only uh, device considerations here, uh, but also because uh, the user uh, mobile phone user is very different from uh, uh, from a desktop user. Uh, his intent uh, on visiting a website may be may be very different. So, uh, a user uh, the mobile phone be someone who is like waiting in a line. He must be he may be going to his college. Or uh, he just know uh, he's just going and wondering maybe his train got late, but he doesn't know how to how to know. Uh, uh, maybe he just got someone. He, he maybe a lecture. So maybe some of you uh, maybe a good mobile user. Uh, someone who is looking for a place to eat. Uh, he's in a new place. Uh, Chinese food, uh, and he's on the road. He just wants to know where to eat. Uh, and of course, uh, the input output patterns are about them in detail uh, in the future slides so uh, so now that uh, to go after mobile phone users but i don't really know how a mobile website should look uh, how what the flow should be is it the same as not uh, so the next question is what should i consider uh, while designing a mobile friendly website uh, so these things uh, uh, also make sense for a desktop website but they matter a lot more uh, on a on a on a for a for a mobile uh, for a mobile friendly website. Uh, as I as I said before, it is a different user. Uh, a mobile user needs some is looking for some looking to get there quickly. So he may be someone who just wants to know stock quotes. He is not interested in anything else, but he wants to know stock quotes of a particular share, of a particular share uh, uh, every minute or so. Or uh, he's someone who is just looking for help. He's in an unknown place and he doesn't he doesn't know the way to the the way to the nearest uh, bus stop or anything. So a mobile user is looking for a specific information and he's looking to get there quickly. And, uh, it's a different device. It's a it's a after it's a mobile phone. It's a completely different device. Uh, screen size, one of the main things that uh, that you need to worry about as a uh, as a web developer. Uh, so screen size on a mobile phone is uh, is very different. Uh, it's not it's not a 19 inch screen. Uh, in fact, uh, it's it's not a, it's nearly equal to two inches by uh, by three inches on a good mobile phone. Uh, it may be less than two inches on a on a on a mediocre one. Uh, so a screen size is very different, and not only different, it's very diverse across many mobile phones. Uh, as it's as it's shown in the image, which again I think is not up to the mark. Uh, it may range from 128 cross 128 uh, pixels, uh, 320 cross uh, 480 for an iPhone, and not only to, and not only uh, does the screen size uh, differ, it's the also so so, so some of the mobile phones may may have the length greater than breadth, but it may be the opposite for some other phones. And now with the fan, uh, which have very really good uh, accelerometers, it, just, it they keep on changing. So if you like hard code the hard code the Side, then you are going to be in trouble because as soon as the mobile phone turns, 
uh, the layout completely changes. Uh, the next next thing is uh, next thing is the keypad, right? Uh, typing is really painful. Uh, don't make your users type a lot on your on a on a mobile phone. They won't like it, and they will find someone else who does the job better. So even with even with the really cool that are uh, that are there, it's just very difficult to get your hands both your hands on the keypad and be on the mobile phone at all the times. The third is is more of a more of a piece of advice. Which is uh, don't expand your website horizontally. Do it vertically. Uh, uh, one of them being, uh, if 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 the website is more horizontal, then people just uh, whether uh, many people they just don't discover uh, uh, horizontalness in the site, but they tend to go vertical. Uh, reason is uh, is that uh, many of the older mobile phones. Uh, on many of the older mobile phones, uh, the web browsers they don't even let you horizontal try, try to do horizontal scroll. It will still scroll vertically, and so it's just not technically uh, possible to scroll horizontally. The third and which is uh, I think the most important is that uh, it's a it's a different network. It's not a it's not a 4 Mbps or 8 Mbps broadband connection with a uh, uh, with a really good uh, with a really good uh, uh, with, with a really good uh, reliability, uh, but in fact, it's very slow. It's it's like uh, 40 kbps. Uh, and so uh, it's so unsteady that the that the packet loss may vary about may go up to till 40 percent uh, or 50 percent, which means that one of every two packets is going to get lost. So it's very unsteady. Uh, if if the website uh, has has some secure pages, uh, then uh, the SSL latency. Goes up to as uh, as big as uh, uh, as much as seven folds. So uh, a normal a normal a normal web page uh, when uh, a normal web page may take uh, five seconds, uh, a HTTPS page may go up to 30 seconds, which is just a deal breaker for uh, many things. Uh, the third is uh, we still don't have very good unlimited data plans in our country. So uh, they uh, uh, I think they just arrived, but they're still very very costly. Something like. 718 uh, 800 rupees per month so still uh, uh, you have to design your website considering that the user would be on many cheaper data plans data plans which are uh, which are you know, not so reliable the third is uh, the fourth one is uh, the 3g and 3.5g networks are still uh, are still uh, not very uh, are still away uh, uh, in fact i just heard the news that bsnl just launched in many uh, in many cities but uh, it will be a while before other players enter that market, and it, it becomes really uh, it becomes a good reality, like uh, like in Japan and other advanced countries. So uh, now uh, now that you know how to uh, uh, how what to consider, there are some other design tips uh, that I sh uh, that I thought uh, I should mention, uh, which which are uh, keep the mobile site very simple. Uh, don't try to cram all the use cases that you that you have on your desktop website on a mobile phone because the user just gets intimidated he doesn't know what to do so keep it very simple uh, keep it task oriented uh, so a user should know what to do uh, if he has a certain use case in mind so let's take the uh, example for uh, of of orkut so if a, if if a user wants to scrap someone else then he should know uh, in one or two then he should be able to do so in one or two clicks he should not take more than uh, more than five clicks to do something. Uh, uh, keep the load link density, uh, keep the density very uh, very low. Uh, not only because uh, it looks it looks very cramped, but also because uh, on some in, even on some of the newer devices like the iPhone or the or the Android uh, or the Android G1, uh, it's very it's very difficult to tap on the mobile phone if the if the if the density is too high. Uh, the next point is that the top of top of a page is really valuable. Uh, it's valuable even on a desktop website, but but the but the value even increases on a mobile uh, on a mobile phone. So uh, don't try to show off ads on the top of the uh, on the top of the page. Uh, keep your primary use cases in mind and show only those. Uh, break down complex uh, always have a handy link to go to the home or back. Uh, this is very important. Uh, if if the if the website has many pages. Uh, and there are some complex flows. 
then try to make sure that if a user gets lost then he has a way to come back very easily. Uh, break down complex operations into smaller operations and with feedback. Uh, the feedback is very important as I said uh, because the network is very steady, uh, unsteady uh, and so if the, if the, if an operation is taking like 20 seconds then the user doesn't know whether his request went through or not uh, and he's, he's trying to wait for some feedback to come and so if so uh, please give prompt feedback on every smaller even the smallest of operations on the website uh, the website should be usable if all styles, if all the styles are turned off uh, this is important because many of the phones they don't uh, support css or if they do they have a different different uh, uh, they have uh, uh, different compliance levels so a particular css property may work on one phone and may not work on another phone so just try to switch the css off and see if the website is usable or not uh, uh, the website should adjust with changes to screen size and orientation. So please don't uh, hard code the length and breadth. Uh, try to catch uh, resize events. And if you're not right, if uh, if you're not able to try, uh, if you're not able to catch those events, then make the site in such a way that it automatically uh, uh, it automatically adapts. So don't try to uh, keep pixels in mind, but work in percentages. So uh, now, now, now you know uh, that I need to create a mobile website, and uh, I know how it looks on paper. Uh, I have sketches made up of uh, made up of the website, but uh, I need to see it on the mobile browser. So how do I build it? So, so the question to ask is, uh, what markups, protocols, and technologies are available today to help me make one? Uh, so you might have heard of these acronyms a lot. I'm I'm sure. But uh, I just thought I would uh, spend one or two minutes on these so for the sake of completeness. Uh, VAP. Uh, so the full form is Wireless Access Protocol. And this protocol was designed uh, in early to mid 90s for uh, wireless communications to, uh, for wireless uh, devices to interact with the server. And uh, the mark associated with this, uh, with this protocol was uh, initially was WML, which is Wireless Markup Language. Uh, WML in its, uh, the intent behind WML was actually very good. Uh, the designers actually uh, wrote the specs in a way so that a website could actually make phone calls. Uh, it could actually interact with some phone properties and uh, also like message and stuff. But uh, uh, what happened was uh, uh, many of the phones, uh, many of the phones actually didn't comply with it. And so what you actually got in the end was a different markup altogether which didn't do anything else other than what HTML already does. Uh, and so uh, uh, web, uh, basically website developers didn't like this that they had to learn another language and they totally gave up on WML. Uh, so what, what evolved was XHTML. Uh, and what XHTML is, uh, is ba it's basically XML. Uh, uh, it's basically a very well-formed HTML. Uh, so HTML, as you know, is, uh, is very flexible. Uh, you, you can even get away with uh, uh, with unmatched tags, uh, tags, but uh, XHTML doesn't allow you to do so. So XHTML is basically well-formed HTML, but also with, with a limit on with, with, with a limit on on what tags you can use and what script elements you can use. Uh, by the way, if there are any questions, uh, I, I can take them uh, at any time. So, uh, the current version of WAP, uh, which is most uh, the which is wo most popular, is WAP 2.0, and the markup associated with it uh, uh, is XHTML MP. Uh, MP stands for mobile profile. So XHTML MP is nothing but just XML, but uh, with uh, uh, with uh, uh, with uh, even lesser tags that, that are that are that are allowed, and even lesser uh, scripting elements like on load events or uh, or on focus events. Uh, not all the events are uh, allowed. So apart from uh, so all so if if I, uh, if I if anyone says that my phone is uh, is capable uh, uh, is a web enabled phone uh, that particular that means that uh, uh, he can view he can view XHTML websites on his mobile phone. Uh, the next technology is, uh, is uh, with the advent of newer browsers and newer mobile phones is uh, the newer uh, the newer mobile phones the, new, the newer browsers uh, are pretty much capable of rendering simple HTML with uh, CSS. JavaScript and uh, re more recently Ajax also. Uh, so, so your normal websites, if 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 the layout is good and if uh, if if you keep the latency in mind, it can pretty much work on the newer phones. Uh, 
so you might say about about security so ssl2 is is ssl2 is also supported uh, on most of the on most of the mobile phones even the older ones so you don't need to worry about whether https is supported or not they are uh, google gears uh, so google gears is uh, already available on on the windows on the windows mobile so your web app can make use of all the gears apis to to do fancy stuff like uh, offline functionalities or uh, you could uh, uh, you can uh, you can also access the location to the gears api so but right now it's only uh, available on uh, on windows mobile uh, uh, apple has been talking about a lot about location api so what the concept is that uh, it's basically javascript api that the that the web app can use to access the location and so basically the app can become a lot more location uh, html5 you might uh, you might have heard of, uh, of this also uh, HTML5. Uh, so the the most popular uh, HTML standard today is HTML4, and uh, HTML5 is, is is a pretty new one. And what it allows more is uh, is basically it has good sensible tags, uh, which means that uh, tags like audio and video, which let you embed audio and rich media content without 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 actually embedding uh, flash objects or or window media objects or basically youtube objects and so basically uh, adding audio and video tags uh, audio and video content becomes very easy uh, it also has a location uh, local database uh, which actually gears has already uh, so uh, local database uh, allows you to keep your content uh, in a cache and basically if the if the network goes down you can still use the cache to uh, to to, uh, to show uh, the previous content that has been fetched uh, HTML5 can do rich uh, animations uh, without plugins. Uh, it already has a canvas support, so a user can basically draw using these canvas tags, and you don't need very, uh, very fancy JavaScript to do that. Uh, messaging, uh, messaging uh, between two documents in a browser has been very tough uh, till now. Uh, uh, even if, if if you have an iframe on a site, uh, on your site, it very it becomes very difficult to communicate between two iframes. But HTML5 uh, has, um, has a message infrastructure which makes it very easy actually. Uh, so most of these things, uh, uh, Google Gears, Location API, Ajax, all this is what what happens on the client side. So you might uh, you might ask about uh, what okay. So what happens on the server side? And the answer is very simple. Again, uh, the server side is actually pretty much the same. Uh, you don't need to do anything special. What you have on the desktop type is pretty much uh, is pretty much okay. The only thing that you need on the server side basically is uh, uh, is basically user agent detection. So user agent is a field which goes in the http header of any request and which basically tells the server where the uh, from what kind of a device or from what device the uh, the the request is coming from and so basically on the basis of, on the basis of uh, user agent the server can decide uh, what what template to show and basically uh, what uh, what uh, what uh, uh, basically what html to render So uh, uh, I'll concentrate for the next two three minutes on uh, on building an XHTML website. Uh, the reason for doing so is the still uh, the long tail of users. Uh, the most of the most of Indian users carry only uh, X, uh, an XHTML, an XHTML uh, capable capable phone. Uh, uh, things like iPhone and, and Android phone are still not very popular in India. So uh, XHTML is where, where uh, is where most of the user base sits now. So uh, I'll skip the part uh, which says what uh, what is XHTML because I already told you so. Uh, but uh, I'll just skip to how you're going to build an XHTML website. Uh, so uh, the first thing you need is is a simple HTML CSS authoring tool, which I'm sure you all, all of you already have because you have been developing websites for uh, for the desktop, uh, and that uh, that is actually enough. Uh, you need a web server. So again, uh, whatever web server you use, Apache or uh, whatever, it, it will work. Uh, the, uh, the only thing that you need on the server side special is is a user agent uh, detector which already is there in all of the web servers uh, you need to know uh, uh, what xhtml compliance levels your your target phones have so XH, so there are two or three xhtml uh, compliance levels in the market today uh, and basically they each uh, uh, so you have compliance levels like strict or transitional which actually tell uh, what kind of what kind of uh, uh, tags uh, this this phone will support and you should already know basically what the phone is supporting before you build the app uh, the next thing is uh, so wall and image transcoders uh, 
So before uh, before uh, talking about wall, uh, I'll talk about uh, wireless universe uh, universal resource files. So each phone has a wireless universal resource file attached with it, which actually tells what the what, what are the capabilities of this phone. And basically, it's an XML file which which tells you what the resolution is, whether the browser uh, gives you a file a, fi uh, a file system access. Uh, whether browser has CSS support or not. So basically all the capabilities and a simple true and false associated with each property which tells you what the phone can do and what the phone can't do. So wall is just a Java API to, uh, to read this XML file. So on the, on the server side, if you get the user agent, you just make a wall call and, uh, and it will tell you whether this whether a particular functionality is available or not. And so basically in the templates, you can just uh, uh, decide to uh, decide to embed some certain functionalities and skip another ones. Uh, you need a browser with capability to switch uh, user agents. Uh, so I won't name any browser in particular, but uh, uh, but uh, most of the browsers, uh, some browsers have plugins or already have a functionality to to uh, uh, to switch user agents. Uh, the reason you need this is because you might you might not have each mobile phone that you in your hand that you'd like to target. So a user agent, so basically in your normal, in your normal desktop browser, if you just change the user agent, the server won't actually know what uh, that, that, the, that the request is coming from a desktop. It will think that the request is coming from a particular mobile phone and it will render the templates that you actually want to test. Uh, next is uh, mobile emulators. Uh, so each SDK, uh, whether it is uh, Symbian or, or, uh, or, a, or a Sony SDK or, uh, or a iPhone SDK, the, each of them comes with a mobile emulator, and most of them, uh, and most of the emulators already have uh, have a browser uh, browser emulator. So basically, you can just use that to to actually see whether the layout is coming correct, whether your uh, whether internationalization is working correctly or not, whether it is able to render specific fonts fonts or not. So mobile emulators are actually pretty helpful. Uh, and the last thing you need is is a is a is some sort of a XHTML validator. So a validator uh, would actually just validate whether the XHTML uh, meets the compliance level that you have specified in the document, or uh, uh, what are the mistakes. And it can, and a good validator uh, can actually uh, can actually tell you that these are the things missing in your XHTML, and you need to correct these. Uh, one of the pretty helpful uh, validator is a is a is an online one, which is uh, which you can access on uh, ready.mobi. So uh, here's actually a screenshot. Uh, so uh, I tried this morning to uh, to actually validate the XHTML of uh, of the Google result, results page on this site, and actually it showed that the that the page was uh, uh, was overall good. And so basically these bar graphs uh, they tell you what the latency is like from certain geographical areas, and so they have basically uh, they have infrastructure to measure the latency from any other uh, geometric, uh, geographical areas, and it will tell you. Uh, uh, on the bottom, uh, uh, I don't think uh, you, you you can see this, but it, it will have 23 tests passed, uh, three warnings, uh, zero fails, uh, comments also. So it can tell you actually that you should do this and you should not you should not be doing this. So uh, what are the what are the other do's and don'ts of an XHTML website? Uh, do make use of the access keys. Uh, Again, uh, there are uh, there are many reasons for doing that. Uh, the most important of them is uh, is to make your site more usable. Uh, so basically, if you if you if if a page has two or three actions associated with it, uh, you should bind them to keys. So you should have one to do something, two to do something else, and three to let's say log out or four to let's say log out. Uh, one maybe to go to home or anything. So you make use of access keys. Uh, second is uh, resize images based on the device size. Uh, uh, I say this not because uh, it's important for layout; it's also because it's important for latency. So, if you are sending a big image where your mobile, uh, mobile where your mobile screen size is just like one and a half inches or two inches, you don't need to send a very five, uh, a very big five megapixel kind of a photograph. You need to resize it on the server and then send that. Uh, do keep the XHTML code semantic. Uh, so things like uh, having uh, uh, h1 tags before h2 tags these are pretty important uh, make sure the right doc type and the correct encoding is set so even though your document may be a good html document it may be well formed 
but since you have mentioned the doc, doc type as wrong many phones will uh, outrightly reject it and not try to even pass the XHTML. So it's very important that the right doc type and right encoding is set. Uh, do not use iframes and tables uh, even though the XHTML, uh, the, even the most basic of XHTML compliance levels tells that uh, uh, tables are actually okay. But uh, the phones that promise to comply with those levels, even they don't support tables. So it's actually sad uh, 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 that uh, things like tables that are used very often in the desktop world don't work well on the XHTML front. Uh, do, not, do not use uh, fancy form elements. Uh, so don't have things like file uploads and all uh, unless you're pretty sure that the that the and uh, that the you are sending only uh, you are sending this functionality to phones that actually have it in fancy form elements and they'll just say page not rendered or they won't even try to render it uh, keep uh, uh, do not keep uh, multiple scrolls uh, as i said scrolling is very difficult uh, try to try to pagin it in a way so that you have uh, after one screen you have more, more kind of a link or a next kind of a link do not uh, do not uh, uh, do not uh, tell your user to scroll a lot uh, do not have links to unsupported doc types this is very important uh, so maybe your page is totally okay you have the right doc type set and everything and the content looks good but actually the links that you have to other sites they may not have the not uh, the wrong, they, they may not have the right doc type set so uh, so basically, when the user is on your site, he's happy. But when he goes, when he clicks on a link, he he gets a he gets a page not rendered, and this actually frustrates the user. Uh, yes. Yes. Actually, I'm uh, I'll come to transcoder uh, uh, afterwards in the future slides. Yeah. Uh, do not have pop-ups. Uh, I think uh, anyone everyone knows this. Uh, this is true for uh, desktop also. Uh, do not have even uh, JavaScript. Do not have JavaScript alerts. Uh, and do not have even soft pop-ups like uh, which you basically render from the server side uh, because uh, things like Z index and everything they don't work well on a mobile phone. So uh, you have made a, a, a pretty good XHTML website, and 50% of users are very happy because they were not they were not able to visit your desktop website before uh, on a, on their mobile phone, uh, and so they are very happy. But but the users that have an iPhone or they have a G1. Uh, they are not happy. They say, uh, "I didn't pay 40,000 rupees for this." Uh, uh, they want something more. They want some flashy stuff. They want a very basically they want a very good user experience. So, how to take a next step with JavaScript and Ajax? Uh, so, first of all, let me say, uh, let me tell you uh, what what uh, uh, JavaScript and Ajax can do. Uh, I kind of uh, assume that everyone knows what JavaScript is and what Ajax is. Uh, in one line, uh, I can just say that uh, uh, Ajax, uh, Ajax is nothing but just a, uh, an asynchronous call to the server, and uh, the server basically just sends the data back. And uh, so, so, the, so the basic the basic point here is that uh, the page does not change, and so the callback on your client side it may it may just read the it may just read the data, it may render it, or it can even just store it for future use. So the main point is uh, it is asynchronous. It doesn't take the user away from the page. And you can simultaneously fire two or three Ajax requests to the servers. So, uh, what can what can Ajax do? Uh, Ajax and JavaScript can actually really speed up a web app. Uh, there are three uh, three main ways in which you can do so. Uh, one of them being uh, prefetching. So, let's say let's say uh, you are on your home page, and let's say uh, you're pretty you're pretty sure that eighty percent of your users after visiting the home page they they they, they visit a particular link. So let's say let's take the case of Orkut. If if on a home if someone is on a home page, then he he may like to visit his scrapbook more than often. So the most likely link that he would uh, he would visit is the scrapbook link. So what what Ajax can do is uh, it can just prefetch the data from the scrapbook, and whenever the user just whenever the user first reads the home page and uh, visits visits the scrapbook, the data is already there, and you basically the phone doesn't take any time to to read uh, to to show the scraps, it's instantaneous. Uh, the, the second thing is caching. So not only can you can you prefetch the uh, can you prefetch the scrapbook data, you can also store it. So even afterwards, whenever the user uh, goes to the, goes to the scrapbook, you don't have to you don't have to make another request. It's already there, and so uh, caching caching really helps. Uh, the third one is uh, 
you can have incremental fetches of updates uh, instead of the whole the whole page and uh, so what I, what i mean is let's again let's take an example let's say let's say the user is on a scrapbook which is basically a list of scraps and uh, he he's pretty sure that he got a new scrap uh, and so let's say he he let, he clicks on a link called get more scraps uh, or get new scraps uh, so what what that link can do is is just just fetch the update and don't uh, doesn't fetch the whole scrapbook page so so the data that is coming now maybe something like just five, 500 bytes whereas earlier it, it used to be something like 10 kbs or 20 kbs so an ajax uh, uh, an ajax uh, uh, ajax basically can really speed up a web app uh, it can immensely improve the user experience as i said you 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 have a case of instantaneous clicks which are which are really uh, good to have uh, you can implement a lot of user actions in line so uh, in fact I, uh, I have a small demo to demonstrate this uh, let me see uh, an android phone and uh, this is our output web app for, for this phone uh, so i can I, I want to demonstrate a couple of points that i already have uh, and the that i'm going to make so let's say i'm on the home page and it has uh, it has already fetched uh, some of the data so when I press on, uh, let's say, friends, it's already there. Uh, yeah, it's already there, and so it doesn't spend any time on basically fetching it from the server now. Uh, it just it, it was already stored in in the in the cache, and it just uh, that I made was caching, which is if I let's say go to photos, and I want to go come back to friends, then I don't want to make the request again. So. I just pre press some friends again, and it's already there. So uh, you can base your cache uh, based on the, uh, uh, the basically the the lifetime of the cache can be based on uh, how 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 quickly the data changes. Mm. Another point I was trying to make was uh, 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 Ajax can really improve the user experience, uh, and one of the sub points was uh, you can do a lot of stuff in line. So let's say this was not an Ajax app. Uh, and let's say I wanted to scrap Lalit. Uh, what I would do was uh, there would be a link instead of instead of this uh, object. Uh, I would press on the link. Uh, I would go to his profile. Then I would click on scrapbook. I would come to his scrapbook, and there I would see an input form in, on which I would submit the scrap. But uh, since I, uh, as an Orkut developer, I already know that scrapping is the most basic use case. What I can do is uh, is something like this. I just press Lalit. It tells me to. It tells me a scrap button there itself. There's a scrap, and uh, it just opens a. It just opens a, a, the uh, the box there itself, and I can just and I can, I can just uh, submit the scrap here. So, I can just submit the scrap here. And it says scraps and successfully. As I said, uh, feedbacks are very important on a mobile network. And it just took me a couple of seconds and I think a couple of clicks to do the thing that would take me something like eight clicks before. Uh, not to mention the extra request that I had to send and extra data usage the user was doing. Yeah. Uh, so apart from this, uh, you can also have offline functionalities. Uh, if 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 the browser allows you to do so, uh, if the HTML if the browser has HTML5 support, or if Google Gaze is available, then JavaScript APIs let you do off, uh, let you introduce offline functionalities. Uh, it can immensely improve the user experience by eliminating blank screens. So if if it's a simple website, you click on a link, then you wait for 10 seconds to for the for the next page to come. Until then, the screen is just blank, and that's just plain bad. So Instead of because because now you are doing uh, uh, Ajax stuff, so basically the user doesn't go away from the page. The the page is not blank. Till then he can do something else that he likes. Till the data comes, so you can just eliminate blank screens. And the last is and which is very important in uh, Indian scenario is you can save a lot of bandwidth and a lot of money, uh, money both uh, on uh, of the user and also and uh, also your. Uh, so because. Uh, uh, basically, what you are doing is eliminating extra requests, which means less load on your servers and less data usage on the user's part. So you are basically basically saving a lot of money. Uh, 
now uh, now that you know uh, how to design and how to build a website I just thought uh, i would like to uh, i would add a slide on what are the popular browsers mobile browsers today and what rendering engines they use they uh, use so basically uh, uh, these are pretty much the uh, six or seven uh, uh, most popular browsers that there are uh, they are certainly not 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 exhaustive uh, they would uh, if i if i try to compile an exhaustive set there that would go about 50 or 100, 100 browsers with different versions that keep coming out every month. Uh, Pocket IE is the browser that, that Windows Mobile uses. Uh, it's basically, uh, its rendering powers are the same that, that Internet Explorer 5 or 4 had. So it's actually behind on some reasons, but uh, it's still pretty good uh, if, you, if, you, if you attach Google Gaze onto it. Uh, iPhone Safari is, 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 the, is the state of the art. Uh, it's, it's present on the iPhone and on the, uh, uh, on the iPod Touch. Uh, Opera Mini is actually Opera Mini is actually very popular. Uh, uh, it's the I think it's the it's one of the most downloaded softwares uh, for mobile platforms. Uh, I'll talk about what technology is uh, in the next section. Uh, uh, then there are other brow browsers, Netfront browsers, uh, the S60 web browsers that already come on uh, uh, on most uh, S60 phones, uh, and the Android web, uh, web browser, of course. Uh, uh, and what are the rendering engines they use? Uh, so most of the most of the rendering engines today are proprietary. Uh, so Internet Explorer, uh, sorry, uh, the Pocket IE has has its own rendering engine. Uh, Opera Mini uh, comes actually actually comes in the category of online rendering. Uh, and the and one web uh, uh, and one rendering engine actually which is taking off is WebKit. Uh, the iPhone Safari uses it. Uh, the S60 browser uses it, uh, and uh, uh, the Android br browser uses it. Uh, and it, it's actually open source, uh, so you can actually uh, no, and you can also suggest uh, uh, improvements to it. Uh, so, what online rendering is uh, uh, is pretty fancy, which is uh, do not render do not render the page on the mobile phone because it may not have the capability. Uh, render it on uh, online on, uh, in the cloud and then send it as an image because image is easy to render, and that's what Opera Mini does. Uh, uh, so, uh, very complex HTML pages it renders uh, uh, on its server somewhere and then sends an image and the image is actually pretty, it's pretty uh, intelligent. So wherever you are on the image, uh, it tries to zoom and uh, collect more information. So, uh, what helpful tools are there to build a, a website? Uh, Firebug and Vyslo, I think, uh, are the most important. Uh, um, for most of you who don't know, uh, Firebug, uh, is a Firefox uh, add-on. Uh, it tells you uh, what uh, uh, it, it, it lets you debug JavaScript and HTML very easily. Uh, and why, uh, what Vyslo is uh, basically Vyslo grades uh, grades the website on uh, on many components. Uh, as you can see, uh, actually I, I have the Vyslo uh, Vyslo page open, uh, and I'm trying to grade uh, m.orkut.com, uh, which is the mobile uh, uh, version of Orkut, uh, on this. So it tells me, uh, so it has basically 13 criteria that, that it uh, grades the site upon. Uh, make your HTTP requests, uh, gzip components, add uh, expires headers. And these are actually, you might think they are trivial, but on most of the sites, on most of the sites that you see on the web, they get an F grade on at least five or six of them. So please don't, uh, please watch out for these. Uh, that's why I think Vyslo is, is a really uh, must do kind of a thing for a mobile friendly website. Uh, you need a user agent switcher. Uh, other Firefox plugins are very helpful, like uh, live HTTP headers. They let you debug HTTP headers. And there are some others also which let you debug JavaScript uh, in a very efficient way. Uh, you need XHTML validators, uh, emulators, uh, Google Web Transcoder. Uh, again, uh, uh, I think I'll skip it here. I'll, I'll, uh, it's already, I have a couple of slides totally dedicated to it, so I'll come later on this. Uh, uh, and RSS feed transcoders. So, uh, most of most of the websites on desktop, uh, I think you already would have an RSS feed if it's kind of a, if it's a, if it's a blog or it's a it's a news website or uh, basically where people read it, uh, read information more. Uh, so now there are RSS feed transcoders for for mobile too, and uh, I think many 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 products like FeedBurner they do it for you already. Uh, Motrix. Uh, just, just some friendly advices. Uh, test with real devices very soon. Uh, do not play with uh, emulators and simulators for 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 a long. Uh, 
you will find that devices behave a lot differently in some cases than as compared to uh, as compared to the emulators. Uh, test with real data plans, uh, especially if your uh, web app is Ajaxy or it has some animations, you would find that uh, suddenly the network uh, suddenly the network went away, and uh, your animations are totally screwed up. Or basically, uh, the flow that uh, let's say uh, there was a complex task containing uh, containing eight to eight to ten clicks. Uh, and the user is just stranded between the fifth and sixth and so test with real data plans uh, at a very early stage uh, think about internationalization especially if your if your product is uh, global so nor could we had a lot of trouble with this because we had to worry about brazilian translations and we didn't do so about uh, till uh, two or three weeks before launch and uh, and uh, I just tried to see if I, if I set my country to Brazil, what it would look like. Look like, and it actually totally screwed up the UI because all the widths and heights that I had set, they they didn't just work for a Brazilian words. So, if if your if your product is truly global, then think about it from an early stage. Uh, have as few HTTP pages as possible, HTTPS pages as possible. Uh, as I told, HTTPS latency is really pathetic. So. Keep secure. Keep the pages secure only when it is most required. Uh, do not forget to write the set the right cache headers. Very, very, very uh, important. Even Bias Global tell you to do so. Uh, gzip the data. Uh, most of the phones today are gzip capable. So don't think that uh, uh, whether the whether if I compress the data on the server side, whether the uh, the browser will able to will be able to uh, decode it. It will. Uh, sprite the static images. More the number of HTTP requests increase, more site more the site will go sluggish. So uh, just uh, uh, sprite the uh, static images into one, and on the CSS mention from which uh, width and height you need the, and for which length you need the uh, image. Uh, compile the JavaScript. Uh, it will make a lot of difference. An uncompiled JavaScript, let's say it is, if it is 200 KBs, a compiled one would actually after gzipping would come down to something like five or uh, 10 KBs. That's like 20, 20, uh, 20 times compression. Uh, remove the white space and reduce the number of HTTPS requests. Uh, so now that you you have made a mobile-friendly website, I just thought uh, I would spend like uh, 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 the rest of the presentation on on the relation with Google search. So what what the screenshot shows here is that if I search for mail, let's take the example of Yahoo Mail. Uh, if I if I if I search uh, for mail, uh, Yahoo uh, appears third, and this may not be the case today. Uh, I took it like a month or two ago, so it may change. Uh, Yahoo Mail actually surfaces as third, but uh, on a mobile phone, if I search for mail, it hits, it hits our uh, mobile uh, Google uh, search results page. Yahoo Mail comes on the first uh, because they have a good mobile product. So that's what. Uh, that's what a mobile friendly website can do. It can actually boost your rankings if you have a good mobile offering. So, uh, so Google uh, actually classifies uh, a website as mobile friendly or not, and it does so based on uh, a lot of signals like page layout, uh, markups that are used, uh, encodings, and whatnot, and uh, uh, and the settings and the settings page on mobile search actually lets the lets the user to use uh, phone friendly websites or classic for a search results so what it does is whenever a user searches only for mobile websites so the the, the websites that have classified sorry uh, the classi uh, the sites that have been classified as mobile by google only they will show up and so if your website is not mobile compatible it won't even show up to that user which is actually really bad uh, if a user for searches for everything so he's pretty sure actually that his mobile phone would be able to render uh, more stuff. Uh, Google will still blend mobile websites, and it will they will get a far better ranking than uh, a non-friendly uh, mobile website, mobile-friendly website. Uh, the last section is uh, on Google Web Transcoder. Uh, so uh, just uh, just a minute on what Google Web Transcoder is. Uh, Google Web Transcoder is basically a tool which Google offers to to transport your uh, your desktop website to a mobile friendly one so uh, i'll just i'll just show a small demo of that also able uh, transporter interface and uh, so basically let's take an example let's take an example of cnn.com uh,
So that's how uh, a CNN.com web page looks like on a desktop. And if I see the transported version, this is the transported version. Uh, so you you you'll see that it's it's a lot mobile friendly. Uh, so if if you don't want to if you don't want to if you don't have the bandwidth to create on a, a separate uh, mobile friendly website, uh, Google Transcoder actually does a really good job, and it does so in real time. So a user can uh, so you basically you can give give out links to this transcoder, and it will just work real time. Uh, just a small fact about it, it's, it's the most uh, computationally expensive real-time service that, that is offered at Google right now. Uh, pretty impressive. Uh, uh, when transcoding is active for a device, uh, the WWW pages are, more pay, uh, are made basically more suitable for display uh, by the transcoder. So if, if the mobile phone is such that it is not, uh, it is, it is, let's say it's very old, uh, it's, it's capable of doing just certain things. Uh, and if you access Google search, uh, the search results won't be, the, won't be to the actual page, but to a transcoded version of that page. Uh, so basically what that means is, uh, instead of, instead of uh, communication being client to the website, the communication will now happen to, from client to the transcoder, and transcoder will in fact uh, talk to the website. Uh, so, you may, you, so you may worry that uh, this may cause uh, an increase in latency, and actually you are right. Uh, this may cause uh, this may cause high latency, but what you can do is uh, if if the if the data on the side doesn't change too often, you can set the right cache headers, and so basically what transcoder will do is basically just cache the uh, just cache the transcoded version uh, uh, in, on its server, and basically uh, the the GWT the GWT to website communication will just cut off, and you will actually just talk to the GWT instead of the website. Uh, one more important thing it does is not only it just transcodes uh, the images and the layout and everything, it also transcodes the out, out, outgoing links. So you're pretty sure that uh, uh, if, if, my, if a user is going from my site to some, someone, someone else's site, he will also see the other site also to be transcoded. Uh, 